So colorism is a constant topic of discussion, especially as it pertains to black men and their dating preferences. There has been many, many a times that black men have been called out for being colorist or for having the snow bunny crisis. But what is rarely talked about is how colorism can be and in oftentimes is perpetuated by women. I came across this video from Daily Wrap Up Crew that I think really does a good job of summing up really how complicated colorism is and how it impacts both men and women. Check it out. We often talk about colorism on our show, you know, how it affects black women, but there is the reverse of that. I've had conversations with black women who fetishize lighter skinned men because they want lighter skinned babies. And I've heard women even tell me that I'm only good for having light skinned babies. In life, I've heard a woman tell me that. My daughters are light skinned babies. So yes, I have to make sure that when my kids are like lighter skinned. Did that make you only prefer light skinned men so you can have a light skinned kid or? No, I, well, I really, I had a kid with a Spanish person, yes, both of my babies father is, is like my baby my first baby father with my first two kids he's puerto no, rican the question is with, the, with, with with the intent to have a light-skinned kid or with yes just because i had the intent to have light-skinned kids i i always said that i wanted to have light-skinned kids and that's what i had growing up i was told like make sure you get a man that he's like make sure he get money make sure that he look good make sure that you know you don't i don't want no kid that has no nappy ass hair your mom is telling you this <laughs> I, i'm caribbean so <laughs> Oh, and I'm not Caribbean, I'm African American. I want that hair to be nice and soft. I don't want no nappy. True. I don't want no kaba kaba heads. So. You know, you're always taught to relax your hair, have your hair pressed, like don't wear your natural hair. Like the first time I got to relax, I think I was like, well, I was like 12 years old and then I decided when I was 20 to not have that anymore. I think a lot of times we get, you know, we talk about colorism so much in, in, our, in the black community and we only focus on black men. When we do have women that do say stuff like this, everybody just sweeps it under the rug. It's almost like, you know, oh, well, whatever. She pre That's her preference. So, you know what I mean? But if a black man were to say like, yo, I want light skin, I only want light skin women because I want light skin babies, yo, they would be dragging him through the mud. He would cancel all types of craziness. You know, I just find that always like a discrepancy. Okay, so back to your original question. Where do you see the colorism? Is it more men or women? From my experience, I've seen it mostly in women wanting to choose a partner that would, if they're, you know, my dark skinned friends, they would want to choose a partner that's lighter so their baby could have, you know, the eyes, the hair, the nice skin complexion because of what they've been through. They don't want their child to go through what they've been through. In my experience, the men around me never spoke like that regarding their, regarding picking someone to be their mother of their child. I've only seen that in like social media, celebrities. I do see it more so in women speaking about. Yeah, Sierra said, although I don't agree with it, I think just based on my experience being dark skin, I wouldn't want my kids, especially my daughter, to go through the same thing. I think everybody should seek therapy, especially in the black community, because we got a lot of trauma that we're working through. Because she clearly went through things as a dark-skinned little girl, and can't sit here and say that we ain't, we ain't see it happening growing up too. Black is beautiful in all shades, and then we come into that realization now. It's more of a focus now, and people are just going with it, but I, I'm glad it's a focus now. Do you think that's fair to the lighter-skinned women now, since everybody is so focused on, or, or they're preferring, the, you know, the melanated women more? I think it's more like a Black Lives Matter thing. We know light-skinned women are beautiful. Like, we, we knew this, we, right? But we, we need to show love where, where the love wasn't put. Yeah. One of the first things that was so interesting about this conversation was the fact that it did not get a ton of traction. Now, let it be clear, if Daily Wrap Up Crew had black men come on there and say that they preferred light-skinned babies and they only chose to procreate with white women or non-black women so that they could have babies with light skin and quote unquote good hair, oh, that video probably would have went viral. But as you see these different black women going around and talking about how they were told by other women in their family to specifically go after light skinned men or to specifically go after non black men as a way to um, try to get along better in society. Women are saying this women are admitting this and it's not getting a lot of traction in play. Neither black men or black women as a collective are responsible for colorism. Obviously, colorism is a result of being subject to a system where you are set up to be a permanent underclass, where white European Western ideals are the standard of society in America, and everything you do as a black person is subject to that. 
This is a result of growing up in a society where dark skinned people were on the field, lighter skinned people were in the house. But if you were black, you were only limited to certain positions of power. And it's even, it's just more recently that you're starting to see some of those things lift, but there's still results of it today. There's still aspects of colorism today that are very much practiced in society. This impacts both men and women. Dr. Tiazan Johnson breaks this down in a video he did a couple of weeks ago, where he said, colorism, it's not just about impacting your dating choices. Colorism actually impacts people's day-to-day -day life. Colorism for men, women, it may mean that they don't get picked first. It may mean they're not seen as beautiful. Colorism for men might mean that they're shot. It might mean that they're seen as a threat. So dark skin, dark skin men and women, they certainly do have a certain experience that's going to be just a little different than their lighter skin counterparts. But I'm saying this because so often the, the topic of colorism just can come into point of the finger at men or point of the finger at women. And it's like, we got to remember black people didn't create this. We did not create this. We are subject to this. Now, I think it's also important to now start to understand not only how this was forced upon you, but now how you interact with it. I think one of the things that black people individually need to ask themselves, especially if they feel that been impacted by colorism in a way that has negatively impacted their life is first, whether or not you are actually playing into it. Are you, in one instance, complaining about colorism, but in the other instance, practicing colorism? And this is something that I think black women, we can be, that we are culpable for. Some of the main women, some of the main even channels out there who complain about colorism, turn around and then promote divesting or promote dating and marrying out literally creating the women that they are complaining about, literally creating the preferences that they claim oppress them. And this is one of the reasons the topic of colorism is rather controversial because it's been one-sided for so long. The men are usually always scrutinized for whatever choices they make, but women can do whatever they want and they're never scrutinized, even if their choices are rooted in self-hatred. And then let's just be honest, now there is this trend of using colorism as a way to overlook bad behavior. If you don't have good relationship skills, if you are combative, if you don't know how to get along, if you don't know how to hold a conversation, if you argue, if you bicker, if you have a bad attitude, that has nothing to do with colorism. That has to just do with interpersonal skills, maybe personal issues, that has nothing to do with colorism. But so often what I'll hear sometimes is black women who have really, 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 really problematic attitudes. Instead of facing that, they'll use colorism as a way to cop out of their own personal issues. And then say if men don't want them or if black men don't want them, it's because they're colorist. And it's like, sis, no, you just don't really have a good attitude. There is something to be said about living in a society where white is the standard, White is a standard in education, European is a standard in, in education, in, in politics, even our language, um, the way infrastructure, you know, it, there's something to be said about having a society that is very much set up based upon ideals or, or cultural practices that don't reflect who you are. And of course that can start to create self-hatred, especially if you find yourself being discriminated against because you don't fit that cultural mold. And this I think is what happens a lot of the time. It honestly is. And so this is the kind of real honest conversations that some of us have to have with ourselves asking us, okay, am I now feeding in the problem? Am I, am I just now trying to fit in where I get in? Am I just trying to assimilate? And if that means, okay, I have to try to play downplay my blackness. If that means I have to try to date and marry out. So make sure my kids don't experience the same thing. That's what I'm going to do. Or am I willing to say, you know what? I don't necessarily abide by these cultural standards. Black is still beautiful and I'm gonna be who I am. Or more importantly, start to work with people, start to, to collaborate with people who are about building stuff and building systems where they can be represented. But either way, I think this conversation of colorism, it is always going to exist as long as there is black people who exist in a society where the standard is not black, the standard is white, you're always going to have this tension. But that doesn't mean that you still can't 
this is, but that doesn't mean that you still don't have value. It doesn't mean that you can't still be beautiful. It doesn't mean that you can't still celebrate who you are. Obviously black is beautiful, but I think it takes understanding the complexities of what it means to live in this society. And then also doing your own research and, and making your own decisions about how you want to live. There are absolutely places and there are absolutely cultures where being black is the norm and it's not an issue and it's not a problem. Maybe you need to go visit those places. Maybe you need to go integrate yourself into other societies. Maybe you need to travel and understand that America or the West is not the end all be all. There is a world outside of colorism. But what do you think? Do you agree or do you disagree? Let me know. Leave your questions, comments, concerns in the comment section below. Thank you so much for listening if you've gotten this far and we'll talk later. Bye.